AutoLine Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence. Here are today's top headlines. More delays in the Chrysler bankruptcy, suppliers ask for more money, and a first look at the final production version of The Vault. Up next, we'll be back with the news behind the headlines. This is AutoLine Daily for Tuesday, June 9th, 2009, and now the news. More delays in the Chrysler bankruptcy. Supreme Court Justice Ruth Ginsburg issued a stay that prevents Fiat from taking control of Chrysler. She was responding to a filing by the pension funds of the state of Indiana. Now we'll have to see if the other justices on the Supreme Court want to hear this case. And in the interim, the Associated Press reports that a group representing over 300 Chrysler dealers, which are slated to lose their franchises, have asked the bankruptcy court to save their dealerships. Chrysler was worried that these delays could torpedo the deal with Fiat, but Reuters reports that Fiat now says it is not going to walk away from the deal. U.S. auto suppliers plan to go to Washington this week to ask for more money. According to Bloomberg, they're looking for eight to $10 billion more in aid. The OESA and MEMA are requesting that the U.S. Treasury back at least a part of their loans from banks to increase lending. GM and Chrysler suppliers need funds to start building parts once the automakers resume manufacturing later this summer. General Motors just opened the largest and most technologically advanced battery lab in the U.S. The 33,000 square foot Global Battery Systems Lab is part of its Warren, Michigan Tech Center and will be used by engineers to develop powertrains for hybrids and electric vehicles. Reinforcing the green image the company's striving for, the facility features LED lighting and flooring made from recycled tires. About 90% of the electricity used for testing batteries is later fed back into the grid. And in other GM news, the company is dropping its medium-duty truck operations. It released a curt two-line statement saying that production of the Chevy Kodiak and GMC Topkick will cease by July 31, 2009. The announcement comes after the company spent years trying to sell the operation to Navistar. The decision will affect 389 hourly and salaried workers at its plant in Flint, Michigan. A new study from J.D. Power & Associates shows that consumers rate infotainment technology as the most desirable options in a car. According to the LA Times, even though safety did rate high, features like surround sound, satellite radio, and in-vehicle internet connectivity rated higher. Researchers say that's because drivers use infotainment features every day, whereas safety features are not needed until an accident occurs. GM has come up with the final production design of the Volt, and AutoLine Daily is the first in the media to show these images of what it'll look like. Interestingly, GM chose to show the final version in all black, giving the car more of a mean look to it than the happy, shiny, smiley styling of other green cars. GM claims it will have this car in production a little over a year from now. I got a chance to test drive one of the mules for the Chevy Volt, actually a Chevy Cruze with all the Volt technology in it, and I'll have my driving impressions posted in the John's Journal section of our website later today. Coming up next, we'll take a look at the Jaguar XF. Changing tires out here could be dangerous, but with these tires, I don't need to worry. Bridgestone. Jaguar is a brand that's bound to tradition. It builds cars with big slabs of wood trim, buttery soft leather, and ankle deep carpeting. For traditional buyers, the company's new XF offers all of these Jaguar virtues with none of its vices, like the J Gate Shifter or Lucas Electrics. To attract new customers, the company gave the car a sleek body and lots of performance. Its look is based on the CXF concept that debuted a few years ago, and it's the first car to introduce the brand's new design language. Size-wise, the XF replaces the S-Type and competes with the BMW 5 Series and Mercedes-Benz E-Class. Even though it's been out only for a year or so, the company made some big improvements to help keep pace with the segment leaders. Jaguar developed a brand new 5-liter engine. It's based off the company's 4.2-liter V8, 
which is still offered in base cars. With direct fuel injection, the 5.0 delivers 385 horsepower and 380 pound-feet of torque, which is enough to accelerate the car from 0 to 60 in only 5.5 seconds. If you crave more power, Jaguar offers a supercharged version of this engine in the high-performance XFR. A six-speed automatic is the only transmission available. Matching its slick new body, the XF sports a designer cabin. The dash and doors are covered in cut and sewn panels and it features a circular gear selector and motorized air vents that open automatically. Jaguar has made great strides with the new XF. If you're in the market for a luxury sedan, it deserves serious consideration. But a word of caution about the car's fancy shifter. If you live in a warm climate, be careful. It gets scaldingly hot in the summer sun, so you better wear gloves when changing gears or risk getting burned. Hey, don't forget to tune into AutoLine After Hours this Thursday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Our guest will be John Mendel, the Executive Vice President for Sales at Honda of America, which is celebrating its 50th anniversary in America. And that's it for today's top news in the global automotive industry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Visit our website for even more great content all week long. Auto Line Extra, John's Journal, Podcasts, and even more. So click over and get the inside view at AutolineDetroit.tv.